Hi guys, I'm uh, back one week later. Uh, we have beautiful uh, weather outside, temperature about 15 20 degrees Celsius. And um, yeah, I'm going to do some work this weekend. Last weekend I, um, I prepared the motor compartments, uh, sanding, 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 cleaning, etc. etc. And I uh, fixed two holes with uh, thickened epoxy and I filled the keel to hole joint with Sikaflex. The Sikaflex is not 100% gap free, so there are some little pinholes I need to uh, touch up later. And uh, the same goes for the uh, two little holes I filled with thickened epoxy in the motor compartment. Um, I made it a little bit too thick so it wouldn't drop down as well as I wanted so I had to fill it up from the uh, uh, bottom side also. Yeah, that's still a little little air bubble but on the top side it looks great. So I have to sand that down and then um, start grinding. I'm going to give the grinder a go today. Um, I have a, a 30 or 40 grit paper on it I, I believe and uh, see how that works out. Now, as you might recall in one of my previous episodes, I completely removed the engine because the engine was a total disaster. The previous owner did take the engine head off to get it overhauled, mainly because he thought the engine was smoking too much. The engine head has, since the overhaul, been laying in a dry storage somewhere. The rest of the engine, however, was just uncovered and open for moisture and other nasty stuff, which has been gathering for the last five to six years. Well, the pictures speak for themselves here. Before I got the engine out, I took some photos and called around for a trustworthy repair shop. As soon as I showed the photos, however, they were not really interested in the job of a complete overhaul. They'd rather sell me a brand new engine. It took me quite some calls to get a Perkins specialist, near by the boat, 30 minutes drive, who convinced me to do a teardown, clean, repair and rebuild since we were on a budget and the new engine was not going to be an option. So I drove the engine to the engine repair guys, Meister Motoren, and I have to say the work they have done to her is very impressive. I have been playing with the thought of doing this all myself, but since time was of the essence, we needed to get the boat to Friesland as soon as possible. We quickly decided not to. Cor and Fred from Meister Motoring gave me frequent updates with photos and entertaining and educational videos. While we were getting the engine compartment ready for a rebuilt engine, we could follow the progress they made. The engine was pretty rusty in all four cylinders and we were unable to turn her when we tried the first time. Since I lack the technical terms for all the parts concerning the rebuild, I will now show you some pictures and videos of the rebuild and come back to you later on in the video. If you have any questions, just comment down below and I will try and do my best to answer them.
for uh, the, the, the engine itself, uh, I received a video from my mechanic last week and uh, they did a test run and everything seems fine, so um, it's, it's running uh, smoothly and uh, yeah, so we're making good progress there also and that means next weekend I'm going to pick up the engine and uh, drive it to my hometown and park it there and all I have to do then is uh, do the electrical wiring I bought a new wiring harness I also bought a new instrument panel so that has to be connected also so when all the wiring is done uh, that should be in a week or two, three maybe and the engine compartment is painted with two, maybe three coats then um, yeah, I'm ordered the little crane to lift in the engine once more and uh, try fitting all the hoses, etc. etc. So that's it for now. Um, yeah, let's start grinding. I don't know if you uh, can see me very well because of the backlit area here, but uh, that went fairly quick. I mean, the 30 grit just ripped off everything. Oh, I've got a few more areas to cover, I see. But uh, other than that, yes, I'm pretty happy. Well, the uh, two holes I patched with the, the thickened epoxy seem to have a air bubble on top of them also. Let me see if I can show you. Over here. And over there, there's a bit of air trapped, was a bit of air trapped, so I have to fill it out once more. And that also goes for the, uh, for the bottom side. And while I'm at it with the thickened epoxy, I guess I will also fix up these holes, so there's no leakage on this side. And that also goes for this over here, there is some leakage, yeah, I just think I'll smear some on it and we'll see then, yeah. So yeah, I'm a bit of a dilemma now, um, I wanted to uh, do a first coat, a base coat priming coat, whatever you call it, but I actually want to epoxy some things, so maybe, maybe, maybe it can work, and I might as well try it, because uh, I'm pretty much sure I'm not going to be able to do it once again, or, or some other time for that matter, so, yeah. Just make some epoxy and uh, let's see where it goes. So when I started this project, my uh, children, I've got two children, asked me to make a video series out of it so uh, they could follow along from their bed or whatever they are watching it. But uh, that seems to be a good idea, but it takes a lot of time, I tell you. I've, got a, I've gained uh, much more respect for all those uh, YouTube uh, videos, video makers. Because uh, yeah, it takes a lot of time and planning. I'm not so good at it yet, but maybe that's also because I did not yet edit any video. I recorded all this and uh, when the boat is a bit more nearby, I will start editing and uh, bringing up those videos one at a time. So now, uh, epoxy. I've got to find stuff because it's not all that neat over here. I've got to find uh, the epoxy, mixing cup, stir stick, the additive, I think I'll be using, uh, well I've got something over there, over here, what I can use, but also that, I also have to find that first, so uh, let me gather everything and then we start mixing. I found these freezer bags, one and a half liter, small and I'll uh, try to use them as a piping bag. Let's see how that works out. 
by the look of it, they're pretty flimsy, so I don't know. I thought I had another kind laying around somewhere, so maybe I'll find those first. Found them. Yeah, this looks a bit better. So, forgot where I got these, but most likely at the exit. My favorite shop. Okay, let's mix up some epoxy. I'm now uh, under the boat and uh, I'm going to show you the holes from the engine compartment from beneath. So, as you can probably tell, there's a bit of. Oh, oh it's still a bit sticky. Oh. That's not good. I had some masking tape on it. But it is still a little bit sticky. Maybe I cannot take advantage of that. So let's give it a light sanding and see how it turns out. I know it's a bit, uh, bit on the wild side, but I'm uh, just making temporary fixes here because once the boat has launched and I'm uh, near home, I'm going to pull her out of the water anyway. So it's all just temp fixing. Don't worry. Now this one actually seems pretty solid, no holes, but this one just a little bit tiny hole. So, yeah, fix that anyway. So now that I'm uh, beneath the boat, I might as well show you guys the Sikaflex job I did. Yeah, kind of a smear job as well. But you can see there's still tiny, tiny little gaps here and there. So, yeah, I'll do those tomorrow as well final run just to avoid any leaking well it's actually not leaking but you know what I mean now let me check the weather forecast particularly for the night that's below 15 so yes um, I uh, on the fixes in the two uh, the two holes in the motor compartment, I used the West the 205 fast hardener, and um, it's for below below 15 degrees, I believe. But anyway, um, it makes me wonder why did the bottom part of the uh, of the thickened epoxy did not cure. Um, but maybe because of it, the temperature drop I had uh, last week was, I think uh, the nights maybe 8 or 7 degrees cent centigrade. Um, but on the other hand, the top part was rock solid. So I'm a bit of, I'm a bit of a doubt now to use or the 205 or the 206 slow which is supposed to be used above 15 degrees. And uh, when I look at my th thermometer, th thermometer, it says uh, 22.1 centigrade. So, yeah, that should be good for 206. But the night, <sighs> I'll stick with the 205 just to make sure that I don't have any unexpected results. And the big part uh, is inside the engine compartment, so I think I can get away with it. So I got some uh, cotton fiber here. I've got some glass levels here. I think I'm going to cook up a nice recipe. 
gonna make the smaller batches because yeah, I don't know how fast it cures. So let's see. Two pumps. Three. Three. Three of these. One, two, three. Gonna go five. Four, five. Gonna do the same. Two more here. One, two. Before I'm going to mix, I'm going to catch me some gloves. first stir and stir and stir and then add in the additives so let's stir for a couple of minutes so after a thorough mix I'm about ready to add in the additives I believe the glass bubbles are typically for uh, filler which could be sanded easily so the fibers are going, just going to be uh, a bit on the rough side, but I don't know if they're particularly good because they've been on the boat for six years and they seem a bit lumpy, but I'm going to give it a try. So quite fast. Now this is still a bit too thin. Just a little bit. Still a bit more. I think this is okay. It's a bit grainy, but I don't think that matters too much. Okay, I'm going to transfer it into the uh, plastic bag. gonna do this now because I don't know if, uh, if I got time enough to set up the camera so see you in a bit I think that actually went quite well the epoxy went quite hot at the end and uh, the last piece I did was a bit it was already a bit hardening up or jellying or I don't know what stage it was but it was getting hot and harder to smooth out so I've got a couple of uh, parts left. I'm going to take you with me for the second round. Okay, I'm having a bit of an issue here to show you guys everything and still be able to do the work. Okay, I mixed up a bit. Let me use the piping bag now because I'm trying to get it in here. Oi. This is one balancing act. Okay, let's see. Just start somewhere. Does it have to look nice? Nah. 
Not really, but... Would be nice if there was a kind of a bevel here. That's not so bad. Okay, I'm going down. Fill the little hole at the bottom. And I'll come back. So that's all I get to do today concerning the engine compartment. Um, I've got some other stuff to do. Um, maybe you remember this. I have to connect hoses, uh, measure hoses. Um, I'm working on the uh, pedestal connection to the uh, aft deck uh, that I'm doing at home. So this is the first effort. This is the last piece in the corner over there. You might be able to see that I'm reasonably happy. And over there as well. Uh, this is also nice. And I'm feeling some drips now. I'm, uh, I'm actually quite happy with this. I don't know how it will turn out or if it is completely leak free, but Hey, it's always better than what it was, so, okay. I've got some other stuff to do. I've got to uh, fit uh, the sink piping on the inside for the kitchen, for the galley. And uh, yeah, let's take it out of the car first. So one of the other things I have to do in the galley is to uh, fit some new of these uh, things in the sink. I've got a double sink, so I've got two of those. we got some freshly new ones. And um, yeah, I've got to somehow make it work with this. Um, and it all has to fit in here. So the, the shelf here could be removed. It's not uh, really necessary to be there but uh, yeah I've got two outgoing one through hole here and uh, that's the situation underneath situation on top all yucky so let's clean first this is the old epoxy from last week yeah rock solid rock hard Still don't know why the bottom side was a little gooey, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. That's not working. Of course it's not. And take a look at one of these things. There's a nut here. And I think the plastic has worn out so there's nothing holding the nut. Hmm. That needs some further inspection so there's no way I'm not and there's no way I can do this any other than to place the saw right over here and see if I can in that way can get a hold of this my best guess is about here <laughs> Thank you. 
Yay! There it is. Oh, dirty. Yeah, like on the boat, they say it's never easy. So, once again, let's clean this up. This part goes here. Dry fitting. Yep. One of the places where it's been leaking uh, above the motor compartment is this. One of the places is this. Now I lift it. I untied the screws and let's, lo and behold, yoohoo. So, got a job to do here. Good morning everybody, it's about 9am, Sunday morning, yet another fun day uh, to look forward to and um, yeah, yesterday I did some small uh, chores, I uh, made a temporary dry fit for the, for the plumbing beneath the sink and um, we made a beginning with the, the engine compartment hatch, the, the big hole where the table can stand in, that's leaking like a sieve so yeah, I'm going to uh, try and uh, put in some butyl tape and find the right screws, then tighten it down and hopefully by then it will be leak proof. For the other part, this morning I woke up at 7 and I thought, well, let's clean out a little bit. I've got some uh, dirty and, and, and moldy headliner lying around everywhere and it's only smelling and, and it's in the way, so I took that out for the most part. Uh, there's still some left, but uh, my car ain't big enough to hold it all. And I took out all the sails I could find. Uh, there were four sails. Two of them were in uh, good in good condition. And uh, yeah, taking everything out and, and bringing it to my garage. So uh, yeah, there's a lot more space over here now. I still have to make it a bit tidy here because it's a bit messy everywhere. <laughs> But hey, that's just me. <laughs> but by taking out the sails, I got some uh, space now in the uh, one of the forward cabins, and uh, yeah, I can take out all my uh, things for paint and for for epoxying, etc., and uh, have it a little bit nicer over here. Um, for the motor compartment today, I'm hopefully going to uh, get the primer coat on. Uh, it's only going to be one coat, so yeah. Uh, thankfully I didn't have to uh, sleep in the smelly room today, because I didn't paint it yesterday, so that's actually a good thing. Particularly my father is going to be very happy to hear it. Before I can start laying up the, uh, the primer coat, I need to uh, sand a little bit more and sand uh, particularly the parts I epoxied yesterday, because it's still a bit on the rough side and smooth that out a little and then uh, yeah going to clean it up again wipe it down and then uh, put on the first coat of paint <laughs> Okay. 
sanded again and more cleaned and vacuumed so I think I'm ready for paint let's get to it as a paint I'm going to use the Sigma Cover 280 and that is because uh, this paint is probably uh, a single component paint. It's a bit flaky here and there, so I tried my best to get rid of the most of it. But to, uh, to get a good uh, adhesive uh, for the next uh, top coat, we need a, a coat that can cope with uh, the 1K paint and then gets afterwards a 2K top coat. The Sigma Cover 280 is a two component paint also. So I have to first, uh, first we have to mix up a batch. Okay, some final mixing. I don't believe there's an induction time, but I'm not all that sure. You guys don't notice this, but this is because uh, it's no smell of vision, but these fumes are not very healthy. So I better take it to a time lapse now. To self, use less paint. I'm stuck with half of what I prepared, so next time two volumes. Yeah. Okay, finished the painting as you have, could have seen in the, in the time lapse, and uh, I'm getting my stuff together and going home. Okay, see you next week. Bye bye.